Welcome! This is going to be the subject of today's video. I will be showing you step by step how I built this airtight filament container using common household items. I decided to build it because I wasn't pleased with any of the commercial solutions. The filament container operates by use of this reusable desiccant in the bottom, which keeps the environment inside very dry. And at such a point when it is no longer dry, I will be able to tell by this display here, at which point I will take the desiccant out and recharge it in an oven. Previously, if I wanted to keep filament dry, I would have to take it off the printer and put it into a dry storage container. Whereas now I can leave it on indefinitely unless I want to change materials or refill a roll, which of course is significantly more convenient. I hope you enjoy the video and let's get going. So this is all the equipment we will be using today. This container will hold the filament. It is easy to open and it is also airtight. I will also be installing this. This is a relative humidity sensor. So this will let me know the moisture content within the container. As well, I went and took the liberty of printing out these parts. I did not design these parts, I uh, simply printed them. I'll post the links to the original creator in Thingiverse. But they simply take these standard uh, ABEC 9 bearings, which are commonly used in skateboards and various applications. Once you have all the bearings on them, you can use these uh, attachments and you can press fit together this assembly. All this assembly does is provide a adjustable width system for holding filament and providing bearings for it to rest and spin freely on. Next we have the gel. I will be pouring a large portion of this into the bottom of the container. This is indicating silicon gel. So as it absorbs moisture, it'll eventually turn transparent. And that's how you know you need to recharge it. And it's reusable, so to recharge it, you simply uh, cook it in an oven. And that drives off the moisture. I also have some uh, Bowden tube parts. And the idea with this is it'll allow me to feed the filament through the box, through a reasonably airtight hole, and feed it close to the extruder. So this will allow me to relocate the filament wherever I choose. So I need to install the sensor here. So if I measure with my calipers, I find that it is just ever so smaller than uh, one and five eighths. So I need to select the right hole saw bit. The closest size I have is uh, one and a half inches. So it looks like I'm going to be doing a little bit of work with the Dremel. This container is also made out of a material called uh, xylar, which is a type of acrylic, which apparently has good toughness, but it still might be a little bit brittle. So I'll have to be careful not to uh, destroy this container by drilling a hole in it. As for the sensor placement, we're gonna go right about here. So I'm gonna mark that off. So oh, here we go. It would appear this material is more like polycarbonate than acrylic, so uh, brittle is not so much a problem, it would seem. Just have to try not to melt this stuff on. And now I have made some additional markings and I'm gonna have to Dremel this out. There. So I have my hole marked right here. I just need to unpackage these tubes. Another advantage of using the Bowden tube 
is I can keep my filament um, more protected from the uh, moist air. Here we've got a few meters of it. In this case, I'm going to be using this uh, male coupler here. Because it has the only threading that I can accept with this M6 nut, I simply need to drill that hole. Mm -hmm. We've got some burrs on the back. So I'll just take my Bowden tube here, right on this nut. So now that I'm satisfied with my filament spool holder, I'm going to stick it down with some double-sided tape. So now that the assembly has double-sided tape on it, I will carefully place it into the container. Place it roughly in the middle here. And we will verify that we got the placement right by testing it with the spool. There. So now it's time to finalize this. So I'll start by taking some of my indicating gel. I have my Bowden tube here at the length. I'll pop that in. Now it's in there. And of course I can take my filament spool and I can start feeding through the filament. Place that in there. Now it's rather simple. Whenever we pull filament out, it goes through our Bowden tube, like so. We can also roll it up. Easy peasy. Pop the lid on the container. And the humidity will start dropping. Now as for the actual install on the printer, put that in there doesn't have any clip to retain it, but I don't think that'll be exactly necessary or super important. And as for securing it to the frame, I'm just going to put on a single zip tie here. Take it, feed some filament, start inserting it into our printer. There. So the standard environment is pretty dry at about 31% uh, relative humidity. And inside we're sitting at 19% relative humidity, which is fairly reasonable considering it's not a lot of desiccant. So we should expect to settle in at around 20%. And I'm going to actually test how well this extrudes. So I'll begin the extrusion here. Assuming my extruder is set right, we will begin seeing filament come out of the nozzle here. It may take some time, but we will actually start seeing the roll moving. So I'm just in the process of doing a bit of a print here, and I can say that so far the sailing is very smooth. Number one, I've taken that filament spool, and I've been able to move it wherever I so choose. In this case, on the side of the machine. Number two, I've saved a lot of money over the commercial solutions. Number three, my filament is now sitting at a very comfortable 17% humidity. And the room is, of course, sitting at about 35%. So relatively speaking, that's a very dry environment. And I'm confident, based on the air tightness of the solution, uh, that it would basically stay that way more or less forever unless I open the lid. 
Uh, and on top of that, if and when that desiccant does get used up, I can simply toss it in the oven to recharge it. So we have no issues on that front and no ongoing costs with this solution. Now, another potential upgrade um, is the smoothness of the action. You'd think that putting the filament through this extra tube with these bends in it might add extra resistance, but it actually really doesn't. Previously, when I had the filament in that corner there, it would actually twist a little bit and tension would build up in the filament and then it would suddenly twist a little bit more. Now, because I'm on bearings, there's very little resistance to the movement of the spool. It'd be very hard to see that movement. It's almost imperceptible. This filament spool is now turning continuously and very smoothly instead of just jerking forward every so often. Um, so I'd be willing to bet that I'm actually less likely to have issues with filament feed using this solution than I am that. Now in retrospect, I'm actually very pleased with this project. I don't have any regrets and I can't think of anything that I'd want to change. We don't look too haggard here. I suppose I've met all the design requirements and as such, this brings our adventure here to a close. Uh, if you've made it this far, congratulations and I appreciate you watching the whole video. Uh, I would of course implore you to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or concerns regarding this project or any of the steps involved in this project, feel free to post them down in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you. See you next time.